is the lady. It's easy to think of Italy as nothing more than spaghetti, garlic bread, and Parmesan cheese, but a quick look at their history reveals they invented fascism. Uh, is, isn't this Kunk? That's her name, right? C-U-N-K? It's Kunk, isn't it? It's not like Sunk or something. <laughs> Oh man, it's great. Philomena Kunk, alias from Kunk on Earth. A brilliant show. She's portrayed as someone who sees things for their face value and then makes fun of the people who have studied them for years. She's got a bit of a Carl Pilkington vibe, where some of the idiocy has a ring of the profound to it. I do have to say, the main difference between her and Carl is while Carl is still a bit of a dunce in his own right because he's, you know, ignorant of things, she is that way on purpose, I guess. I'm pretty sure Carl's just Carl, you know? And she says incredibly hilarious jokes. He's just kind of awkward. Still great, though. I still love Carl. Can Peter explain this, please? Boys with the time machine, I'm your grandson. Wow. Girls with the time machine, do not agree to be in The Shining. Okay. <laughs> I actually know this one. It's all of the apparent abuse of Shelley Duvall on set. Lois, the woman in the bottom right is... Oh, wait, sorry. I gotta... Lois, the woman in the bottom right is Shelley Duvall. I'm not doing that. I'm not... Okay. Who played Wendy Torrance in The Shining. She apparently went through large amounts of mental and emotional trauma and torment when filming this movie. Stanley Kubrick did this on purpose to make her fear and dread more realistic in the movie. She was isolated, Kubrick was unusually cruel and abusive to her, and most famously, the baseball bat scene was reshot so many times it broke the world record for most retakes of one scene. It was reshot that many times specifically to make Shelley's acting and reaction more upsetting and unnerving. All of this was at the expense of Shelley's long-term mental health. As I recall as well, Kubrick being a psycho that wants to film again and again and again, didn't he also make Scatman Carruthers break down as well? Because that man wasn't really an actor, so he also wasn't used to the idea of doing it again and again and again. Also, just for good fun times, that particular sequence had to be refilmed 127 times. And if you have seen the sequence in the movie, there's a lot of intricate stuff going on in there. Okay, not a lot. It's just more intricate than a simple conversation scene or something like that. It's pretty crazy. The dude was too much of a perfectionist. And as we all know, perfect is the enemy of good. Although The Shining was pretty fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Peter, why is the father traumatized? Wait, isn't your dad home? It's okay. He won't do anything. Never does. My dad's a griller. Okay. Centrists, or people that don't participate in politics, are often viewed as grillers. They just want to take a load off and not worry about the chaos. Daughter is saying the boyfriend doesn't have to worry about her dad taking a stand to them because he doesn't stand for anything, basically. So the comic's just boring as hell. Oh, it's, yeah, there we go, it's this guy. All the media says is racism, shooting, socialism, KKK. I just want a grill, for God's sake. I knew I recognized that character design from somewhere, man. I'm lost on this one. Hey, what time was I born? Nope, stop talking to her. <laughs> Wait, what? A question often asked by people who believe in astrology to determine your personality traits. Oh, I didn't know it went down as far as time, but okay. POV, me in hell after giving an orphan a calendar with only 363 days in the year. <laughs> what? 365 days in a normal year. They took out Mother and Father's Day. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know why I never would have been able to put that one together. Well, it's because I'm stupid. A black guy asked me out today, which means I need to hit the gym, huh? Does this have to do with some sort of stereo... You know what? I know exactly what it is. The joke is referencing a stereotype that black men like fat women. Fat white women. There you go. Thanks a lot, Reddit. Thank you so much for that, and what a great meme. How f cute. Yeah, great. Peter, why is this plane used in so many arguments? Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> fiction. No trans person and passes. What? What's that in response to? What are they talking about? And yes, survivorship bias. During World War II, the combatants were trying to figure out where to best armor. Since armoring aircraft added weight, they wanted to add it in the most effective spots possible. They looked at where planes got shot to figure out where to armor them, but then realized this only includes the planes that made it back, not the ones that never did. Perhaps it's better to armor the places that returning aircraft weren't struck, as the ones struck were obviously not the ones 
ones that made it back. Because of the bias, getting a correct statistic to operate off of is very difficult. The joke here is that you only ever see the trans people that don't pass because you never notice the ones that pass. How does sex feel? Physically, for a penis, it feels like entering a hot tub and being hugged at the same time. Don't you mean for a cylinder? So I have to bear this cross forever. <laughs> huh? Hi, not Peter here. This is the same guy who got his cylinder stuck in an M&M bottle. Uh, wait, uh, hold on, what? In a what? Also, it's just kind of funny to hear M&M bottle. Like, I know what you mean. It's just kind of funny to hear it said like that. How would you get a small cylinder, 5.1 inches in length or around four and a half inches girth, unstuck from a mini M&M's tube filled with butter and microwave mashed banana? <laughs> uh, <laughs> why shouldn't white people be doing this? Your rap name is Lil, plus the last reason you were in the hospital. I don't think white people should be doing this. Yes, Reddit, explain. Because rap culture is considered part of African-American culture, meaning she thinks white people can't enjoy or take part in such things. Not OP, but thanks for the explanation, greased up deaf guy. That's Lil hearing aids to you, bud. <laughs> is that the real greased up deaf guy? You know, how about a knowledgeable lad? What am I missing here, PETA? <laughs> I yelled, good morning, officer, and he looked up. You ain't fooling nobody. Does it have to do with undercover officers always looking about as obvious as they f***ing can? That's an undercover cop. You can tell because the fact he stands in the corner to survey the room and is dressed like a bad imitation of what a hip, cool gangster youth would look like. There are other tells, but those two are the most obvious ones. <laughs> yeah, they definitely totally don't look like cops. Although, to be fair, as someone that's not always on the lookout for them, I probably wouldn't notice his dumb ass in the corner anyway. PETA, what does the Japanese mean? All right, well, let's take a look-see here. Just learned Japanese Splatoon players abbreviate League Battle to this, and I can't stop laughing. What's this? All right, well, let's see here. The Japanese translation for League Battle is literally League Match, and a common way of abbreviating things in Japanese is by smashing the first few syllables, which in this case results in something that sounds a bit like Ligma. When the second tweeter asks what Ligma is, the trap springs shut, and the first person replies with the common joke Ligma balls. This post takes both wisdom and stupidity to understand. Well, look, wisdom and stupidity have to go hand in hand, otherwise we would have fallen apart a long time ago. Someone explain this. Okay. No, I don't think it's unfair. I just got to work hard, and someday I'm going to own my own pyramid. Oh, yeah, I see what they're saying. Let's see what Reddit has to say, though. Hey, Meg here. The joke is that the people pushing the stone are at the bottom of the pay grade. Even the whip guy would probably not be that rich. Or I like that they said, would be pretty not that rich. In truth, only the very wealthy got pyramids, and poor people were buried underground with some of their possessions. Wait, I thought pyramids were for the pharaohs, not just the rich people, the ones that were, for some strange reason, royals? This relates to the current state of the world and the denial that a lot of people have towards realizing they'll never be able to afford the millionaire lifestyle. Or the billionaire one. Or something political, I don't know, eat the rich. Meg out. Hey Meg, shut up. How about that? You right, though. Also, yeah, I didn't think it was just super rich people that got pyramids. I thought it was just the pharaohs. Was I wrong? Why is it bad for all retail workers? All right, let's see. Sean Mendez is coming. The singer wiped his social media layout after tweeting the title Wonder to fans online. No, I work retail, please. Oh God, no. It's because they're going to have to listen to a Sean Mendez hit. One of them, not the whole album, forevermore. It's kind of like hearing Let It Go whenever Christmas time rolls around. I worked at an IHOP the year that movie came out. And oh my god! What, Retep? Retep? I, I, what is that? Anyway, big box corporations and stores will generally have a playlist slash set of music on repeat throughout business hours. If you work on the sales floor or anywhere in the building, it's like auditory torture. Listening to the same stuff over and over and over. Sean Mendez is a popular mainstream artist with mass appeal, and the person is dreading the thought of having to listen to him on repeat. Yes, that is exactly correct. Left-wing literature? 2013. Right-wing literature, 2023. I know exactly what this one's talking about. Hi, Peter Potta here to explain the joke. Who's ages 12 plus and older knows that the Harry Potter series deals with magic and eugenics. When the series first came out, it was vilified by fundamentalist Christians, mostly right-wingers, for glorifying and promoting witchcraft. Naturally, the kids and the alternative crowd who had left-wing views thought the world of Harry Potter was a safe space for their fascination with wand-waving and the British people, both of which are pretty gay. 
<laughs> Thank you so much for throwing that in. I don't know why. That's fucking hilarious. Okay. However, that all changed when J.K. Rowling, the creator of the series, made a controversial tweet, or Z, point and wink, nah, it's tweet, no, that's what we're gonna stick with, about her feelings on trans people. The fandom quickly fell apart after this, resulting in most of the fandom canceling Rowling by giving her the Avada Kedavra treatment. Ironically, the same right-wingers who once called her books, or for her books, to be banned and burned, are now Rowling's biggest supports. Kind of like when the racists left the Democratic Party after LBJ thought black people were cool? The joke here is that Harry Potter went from being loved by witchy girls to far-right extremists after one tweet. You made the same joke again, chill out. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've just been sorted into Slytherin House and feel the urge to make fun of some mudbloods. Roadhouse! The f*** does that even mean, dude? What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh man, that joke got me. <laughs> 2000, 2020. I don't know why he's smiling. That's not a good goddamn thing, dude. Flying insects down 60% since 2000. Well, it's not because of cars. It's because of pesticides as far as I know. But yeah, I don't get happy when I take a road trip and my car ain't covered in bugs. It is still a little bit covered and I still run into plenty of them while driving around. But uh, yeah, it's a lot less than it was even 10 years ago. Peter, I don't get it. Mr. Shapiro, you have milk in your refrigerator, but I see no cows in your field. You are hiding Abigail Shapiro under the floorboards, are you not? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyway, great. This is a reference to people hiding Jews under the floorboards in Nazi Germany. The Nazi officer is able to deduce that Ben is hiding his sister under the floorboards because they have milk in the fridge, but no cows. Which means he's milking his sister's famously large breasts. I regret that I read that explanation. Well, to be fair, you didn't know where it was going initially. That's why you're here. One of the most brutal KOs I've ever seen on the site. Please know, if you're someone who brings a book to the bar, nobody likes you. How much of your life, expressed as a percentage, have you spent gesturing for women to take out their earbuds? <laughs> if I had to guess with this one, it's guys that can't mind their own f***ing business and just have to talk to you. No, you don't. They're listening to music and minding their own business, so why don't you mind your own? Jeremy Jeremy dislikes the idea of someone going to a bar to do an activity alone. Reading a book implies they don't want to interact with others. Hat is saying the reason he dislikes book readers is because he wants to bother women. More than likely. <laughs> oh, man. I haven't seen the news. What does this mean? Iron Lung reference. My brother in Christ, these are billionaires, not slaves. They did this to themselves. Oh, because in the game Iron Lung, aren't you like a prisoner that gets sealed into the submersible and sent into the giant lake of blood on a moon somewhere? I don't know. I'm crazy. I can't wait for the movie, though. A deep sea submersible recently went missing with very rich passengers. Who else could afford a recreational deep sea trip? This meme is on three layers at this point. Layer one, people joked about how this was like the horror video game Iron Lung, where you pilot a submersible. The second layer soy jacks those people. So the second layer soy jacks. Oh, Okay, this real life tragedy is just like my video game. The third layer mocks the second layer for being uptight, saying it's not much of a tragedy because the victims were super rich and knew the risks beforehand. Which, as we know, at least one person on that submersible did not deserve it. They were a goddamn teenager. Okay, what does this mean and what is the joke? We should improve society somewhat, yet you participate in society. Curious. I am very intelligent. <laughs> the comic is missing three panels which make it a bit more clear. What? How have I never known this? All right, let's see what the rest of the panels are. Apple AirPods cost $159, but they can't pay taxes or decent wages to their Chinese factory workers. Post. You said on an iPhone. Heh, <laughs> gotcha. Cars should have seat belts. Yet you bought one. Hypocrite much? Owned. Yeah, the guy's real smart, ain't he? I love it. <laughs> I had a dude come while kissing. Yeah, I'm out of the loop on this one. Let's see what the explanation is. Is. Featured is a DC comic character known as Eobard Thawne. Oh, oh, okay. AKA Reverse Flash. He's obsessed with ruining the real Flash's, Barry Allen's life. He's a typical monologue guy, though. So in the scene of the Flashpoint Paradox, where Thawne monologues, people like to make funny edits where he has more ridiculous explanations for why Barry was running too slow to time travel and fix a mess of his own creation.
question. The name of the meme is It Was Me, Barry. The most popular insert is that he did something to give Barry a boner, stealing a little bit of blood from his legs. So there's this one hilarious edit somebody made about... Wait, what? So there's this one hilarious edit somebody made it, oh, about a time Barry jizzed his pants when a girl touched his leg. Okay. And that's what this meme is referencing. Don't know why that one was hard for me to read. Maybe because I'm not a giant nerd. I'm just kidding. Remember when you were making out with your first girlfriend and you came right as she touched your leg? It was me, Barry. I jerked you off at super speed so it seemed like you nutted at a woman's touch. <laughs> I don't understand the image of the woman. You li The woman. Did I read that right? No, women. I did not read that right. Women. Plural. Many of them. You ladies ready to have a Gouda time? In unison. Yes, Mr. Chetta. Great. First stop, the Cheesecake Factory. Uh, not, not Peter here. This might just be funny because of Mr. Chetta's dad jokes. That being said, the women depicted also kind of look like e-girls or goth girls and are happy to be hanging out with Mr. Chetta, which adds some comedic effect because you wouldn't expect it. Who the hell wouldn't be jacked as hell to kick it with Mr. Chetta? <laughs> that's his real name? Okay, that's kind of sick. I like the guy. Peter, why is it bad news she's made a younger friend? Oh boy. Why is my mom telling me that this 28-year-old girl is obsessed with her at work? She's like, I'm 60. Why she want to be my best friend? Mom, I have bad news. That's her work, mom. Oh, woohoo! Do bicycles not exist in America? In America, they do not let you ride bicycles. If you're caught riding one, you're immediately executed by Ford F-150. Basically, she's a North Korean escapee who appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience. I did not know that. She would say things like, in North Korea, you couldn't take a shit in the bathroom, you had to use the poop wall, or something starting with, in North Korea or in America. Here, they're using it to satirically say that bicycles are outlawed in America. Thank you, Peter. He's a little off. She's this grifter who often gets attention by claiming America is more authoritarian and controlling than North Korea. Thank you, Lois. Wow, that sure is cute. All right, let's take a look-see here. Try to impeach this. Oh, uh, I don't know. It has to do with the idea that they think land votes for some reason. The two shallow and wide glasses hold the same amount of liquid. The next panels you see, the transfer of said liquid to the taller, thin glass. The volume and quantity of the liquid remains the same. The third panel, the child points to the taller glass. The comic is pointing out that although the red map covers more land than the blue, it does not accurately convey the number of voters, because the blue districts hold the same or more of the population due to density. Yes, but of course, for this weird football match we call the two-party system over here, yeah, they of course look like they're way more commanding, but yeah, it's just population density, that's all it is. Land does not vote. So there's that. Anyway, can't tell if I'm missing context or that's just a shit post. I've been up all night trying to think of any possible way to de-escalate this war. Call Zelensky a pedophile and ship him a submarine he didn't ask for. <laughs> oh man, this, I'm gonna answer before Peter does, is referencing when I think it was a group of kids were trapped in a cave and Elon, in his infinite greatness to come out and assist in the situation, thought that building a submarine could help. I know I'm missing a lot of details, it's just kind of the gist of it. We're going to get the whole story in a second. I just want to feel like I know something for once. Anyway, let's hear an explanation from somebody that actually had the time to write it all out. That's what he did to the group in Thailand that was trying to free the kids trapped in a cave. There was a group trying to get them out, and when they rejected a tiny submarine that Elon offered them, no, he called, like, the lead guy a pedophile, not all of them. Called them pedophiles and shipped the sub anyway. Very weird situation, but thankfully they got the kids out safely not using the sub. And as I recall, as someone who really only had a, a knowledge of Elon Musk from just what people told me, you know, just random knowledge. I knew who he was and Tesla, blah, 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 all that garbage. And I thought he was okay-ish for being a billionaire at the time. This was the first thing that made me think, hmm, the dude just instantaneously called some dude a pedophile on Twitter. That's a little weird. Hmm. I wonder why he did that. My friend sent me this and I have no idea why the hell it's supposed to be funny. Following your recent eye test, we're writing to confirm- It's because it's giant font. Recent eye test? Huge font? They're blind. How do you not get that one? The text is big because their eyes are bad. Peter, I don't understand. Sitting blindfolded, woman in lab coat feeds me a Twix. Left. She marks her notes. 329 consecutive correct guesses. That's just me. Hey, Peter here. Don't listen to re- Yep. Twix had a campaign where some rappers said left and others said right. While in reality, they're the same. The real joke is that the man is insane and thinks he's able to tell whether or not it's a left Twix or right Twix just by the taste. Edit. Peter again. I now realize that the man 
actually can tell the difference, but the government sent him to an institution as a cover-up so they can study his inhuman power. Sorry for the confusion. Exactly. Exactly! <laughs> I'm never wrong.